Dorothy Hathcote teaches drama, but it's nothing to do with wearing leotards or pretending to be a tree. Mrs. Hathcote uses drama as a teaching medium, a way of stimulating a child's mind to richer levels of learning. Over the past 30 years, this highly individual style of teaching has earned her a worldwide reputation from her base at Newcastle University. A lesson with Dorothy Hathcote is fulfilling and fun. I chose to run, first of all, a shoe factory, a boot factory, because of the three interests that children told me about when I met them in school. And I asked them the question, what's it like being a northerner? And out of this came these three worries, the microchip, the loss of jobs, uh, the interest in fashion and the interest in history. But by far, the worry about the microchip and unemployment as a result uh, I think was in the ascendancy. The starting point for Dorothy Hathcote's shoe factory was here at Broadwood Junior School in Newcastle, where last October Mrs. Hathcote met the 14 children who would help her make this series. To prepare for it, the 10 year old spent the Christmas term studying footwear and visiting local craftsmen. Then, with nobody knowing quite what to expect, the children met Dorothy Hathcote again. This time for an introductory session in their television classroom. Hello. Come on in. Here you go. It's a while since we met, isn't it? Right, let's all gather around here a minute. I've been making my desk ready. Oh, let's put those on there. And then I've sort of got this ready. Oh, good, you brought your cups. Fine. Lovely. I should just put them on that table there, then we can have a good look at them. You've remembered everything, haven't you? Right, do you want to have a look at the studio cameras just to see how cameras look? Well, you know, the cameramen will shake hands with you if you want to say hello. Uh, you've got to watch you don't trip over cables. Would you like to just go and have a look round and see, and then we can get sort of settled, and then they can get on with their work and we'll get on with ours. They're sort of like, I find them like sort of big animals in the room, gliding quietly about. And then when you've met everybody, we'll, uh, we'll set to. Because <clears throat> we've an awful lot to do this morning. In this introductory session, recorded before the series proper, the children chose their own layout for the factory. There was a lot of running around and moving furniture and pinning up pictures. Into our factory with shoes and that lying about and everything looking like it's getting done. Right. Then, to fit their old established now, firm with its high-class reputation, the children chose a name. Blackley and Brody, makers of fine leather. So we really need one table at least that has a sewing machine on. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Well, you only need imagine the machine and the machine comes into your mind, doesn't it? So it'll be a machine then. So we don't need a great sewing machine because you'd have that between your ears, wouldn't you, thinking it? Right. In fact, everything will be thought, won't it? Because when you're working on a boot, you haven't got a boot. You just have the feeling of working in a factory, so we'll have the boot when we need it. So if, if I want to pick a boot up and polish it, I've got it, haven't I? And you've got the same, because uh, it's, it's there behind your eyes. The children are taking it's their so first good. step into the imagination, the starting point for any good drama. They've learned something about the skills of the real shoemaker. Now, bit by bit, the whole process has to move into the mind. And Dorothy Hathcote demands something else in this introductory session. That the workers accept her not just as their teacher, but as the factory manager as well. A role she will adopt frequently to further the action of this unscripted and unpredictable drama. Who's doing that invalid boot that was ordered for, uh, I don't know who it was, it was a special order. Yes. Have you finished those invalid boots? No. What are you doing with that last? Well, it's no good wrapping it up, one who wants to get some leather cut out. 
Um, hey, just a minute. Look. Look at that. Scratches at work. Now, this is not going to be fast. You've done a lovely job on the finishing, but we're going to have to watch this. Will you be sure you give them a good buffing up? Right? And you women, check your fingernails. We can't do with scratches on leather. You'd better get a bit of dye on that and, uh, I know. you know, I, I'm not having things sent out of this factory that are not perfect. Have you got it? Yeah. Have you got a tape measure? Tape measure? Mm-hmm. Anybody got a tape measure in your drawer? Here, suddenly, the idea of imagining works. Maths and so much English and so much and so on. And uh, so I'm going to take the, the work of the factory, lay out the, um, the jobs, and divide it into different kinds of skills. But what I'd like the children to do is begin to realize that uh, feet can ache. And you may not always uh, feel like going on with this. And you can't always just stop and rush for the boss. And so I would like to establish a fairly slow, steady, rather grinding day, a dull day, a November day. A Monday. Come on in then. Morning. Morning. Had a nice weekend? Yes. Good. Right. I've been checking over these special jobs and uh, I've done you out a job card because these are obviously important enough to have everything recorded. Who's dealing with that set of invalid boots? Uh, you got started on the design. Good. Well, you'll see there's a job description and any problems that arise. That's your work for the day then, uh, Sarah. Uh, can you just get yourself settled down and get stitching or whatever needs doing? You'll find the chairs, the cleaners put them over there, you know what she's like. Uh, who's dealing with that? As Sarah goes off to start on her invalid boots, yeah. the factory manager issues the rest of the day's work. To stretch the children's imagination, she's included leather work other than just shoes. A money belt for a bank cashier to wear. A camel bag for an explorer in the desert. Three sets of elephant shoes for a film about Hannibal crossing the Alps. A dog sleigh harness for a team of huskies in the Antarctic and a harness for a steeplejack. And though each child has come prepared with a working drawing of his or her own task, its manufacture during the lesson will open up vast areas of learning as teacher and students make the drama work together. Come to the stores with me and I'll give you the leather you need. Right. Have you got the key? Thanks. Now then, you see, there's every thickness from the thi very, very thick down there to the very, very finest up there. Now, it's that sort of leather we need. Do you see what I mean? You need those other eyes, you know, the eyes of the mind. Right, and it'll be the eyes of the mind that we need all day today because we're working at working really carefully at making shoes. No more long. How long did you want? Oh, to the attic again. 32 metres. Is this for the, uh, is this for the dog uh, sleigh harness? Can you machine it together? Uh, mm. six mm. Well, I think you'd better just get onto the wholesaler and uh, and order what you think you need. What width of strapping are you doing for the dogs? A three-inch three strap. Three inch for that main bit. And yes, three, three inch for the chest harnesses. Uh, How long are you making the actual, uh, you know, reins for the team driver? 